quite a busy weekend, all things considered in BYU sports with BYU basketball adding another member to their basketball program in Jackson Robinson. What does the former four-star athlete bring to BYU? We'll delve into that. We'll also talk about some awards that were handed out across the board to some BYU athletes from their spring and summer sports. About all that and more ahead on today's edition of Locked on Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, my friends? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. But more importantly, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Apologies for this one. A Monday edition coming out uh, later in the day on Monday. Had some extenuating circumstances around Father's Day etc but excited to be here and let's start off on the basketball front I of course we did a football heavy week last week and Friday's edition of the show I already had in the can and I had some things uh, planned but all of a sudden Thursday I'm cruising around I was at the Utah Social Open I already talked about that last week playing some golf but all of a sudden across the Twitter timeline comes the announcement that Jackson Robinson a transfer from the University of Arkansas is going to play for BYU men's basketball and that was a bit of a surprise to me because He was not on my radar. I know there's some other guys who were, I guess, I I would say more in the know. Guys like Robbie McCombs, who had been hinting at a surprise addition potentially for BYU. Oh, I'm guessing this is Jackson Robinson, a former four-star athlete who is already well-traveled despite being just 19 years old. This is a kid who has already played at two different basketball programs, both of them Power 5 programs, originally signing with Texas A&M, seeing scant action across 14 games as a true freshman, only 17 years old, by the way. Uh, During the COVID year, he actually reclassified to be eligible to play college basketball. He skipped his senior year of high school ball Joined Texas A&M, and like I said, averaged two, just over two points in 14 games with four starts for the Aggies, and then transferred to Arkansas to play for Eric Musselman. Eric Musselman is known as like the transfer portal guru. He is teams are built on the transfer portal. In many ways, he's kind of the guy that I think most BYU fans think that Mark Pope is, but Mark Pope doesn't even do it to the level that Eric Musselman does there at Arkansas. Uh, he played for BYU this past season, did not, oh, excuse me, so he saw action in 14 of Texas A&M's 18 games during the COVID year with four starts. Like I said, averaging 2.1 points and 1.1 rebounds. Then decided he's, you know, he's going to transfer. He transfers to Arkansas. He visited there three times, according to reports, for unofficial visits. Then uh, gets to Arkansas. They're coming off an Elite Eight finish. This is a four-star athlete. You're like, okay, this is a natural fit. Well, he had four starts in just 16 games for the Razorbacks. So across his career so far, he has seen action in 30 games. So across two seasons of college basketball, he's essentially played in one season worth of games, if that makes sense. Uh, obviously, Arkansas had a very, very good year, but Eric Musselman, as he is wont to do, went out and secured the number two recruiting class, having five transfers coming in, uh, just absolutely nuts. Turning over his roster, I think 11 total uh, roster changes for the Razorbacks coming off an Elite Eight finish, losing to Gonzaga, but Robinson, for lack of a better term, was just forced out. There was not room in the inn for him with Eric Musselman in Arkansas. So that's a bit of a, a sad thing is this is a kid who, by no fault of his own in many ways, like the first time transferring, okay, you get it. He wants to find greener pastures, feels like AM's maybe not the right fit for him. But then he goes to Arkansas figuring, okay, with an upperclassman-laden squad, I'll kind of bide my time, and then I'll take over the next year. Well, apparently he was not in the plans, and he's kind of pushed out. He missed the May 1st day deadline to be eligible right away at BYU. So he will have to go through a waiver process with the NCAA to get himself eligible to play. But based on all the extenuating circumstances, you go to the NCAA and say, here's the thing. I was told I don't have a roster uh, roster slot at Arkansas. What am I supposed to do? I would fully expect that the NCAA will grant him his petition to be immediately eligible. Him coming to BYU, speaking of Robinson, means he has at least three years, possibly four due to the COVID year, depending on how it's implemented, as well as a redshirt year. 
I would actually think this is a home run pickup for BYU because Jackson Robinson can grow with BYU, go into Big 12 play. He's already played at the Power 5 level. He's practiced with two NCAA tournament caliber teams from the, I guess it's Power 6 in the college ranks, but he has got a lot of things going for him. If he can live up to his four-star potential, this is a kid who could be an NBA draft pick if all goes the way he intends to. Obviously, when you're a four-star prospect, there's a lot of people projecting you to maybe be one and done, uh, play maybe two years and go to the NBA. Well, he's played two years, has seen very scant action so far in his college career. I think the opportunity for BYU here is to let Robinson come in and develop and work on his game. Obviously, this is a kid who probably had stars in his eyes thinking, okay, I'm going to be the next big thing. I'm going to cash in, jump to the NBA, all of that jazz. And I, I get that. I, trust me, if I had the opportunity to do that, I probably would have been chasing that dream as well. I'm, I'll be frank. I, 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 with the new circumstances be what they are, the sooner you can get to the NBA, the better, because you can start collecting paychecks. And the NBA, it's got a lot of money in it right now. So I think that he comes into BYU as the perfect fit as a three and D guy who can come in and kind of just fit into his role and develop his game. He is going to obviously be expected to take on a pretty big role with BYU being a four-star athlete. There's not many of those that have come to BYU in recent years, but I really like uh, what he has on the table. He's six, six, 200 pounds. He has got the frame, the length. It just screams to me a guy who can be an impact player for BYU as soon as this season, if he ultimately is ruled eligible by the NCAA. That is the only question that remind that remains here. He is still only 19 years old. Let's let's also talk about that. This is a kid who has played at two power five programs. He's on his third program and he is not even 20 years old yet. He is well-traveled. He has been through a lot of different things. And the hope is that his psyche, he comes in and says, you know what? I want to come in. I want to prove myself, develop my game, and hopefully ultimately make good on what people thought of me as a four-star athlete, 24-7 sports, et cetera, ranking him as such. So I really think this is actually a fantastic pickup. Obviously, you have guys like Rudy Williams who are one and done for BYU this year. He's going to play the one season. A guy like Jackson Robinson, he can be a part of the core for the next potentially three, maybe four years at BYU. If he ultimately does have to sit out this season, he's got that redshirt year, and then he'd have three more seasons beyond that to potentially play for the Cougars. So I think this is a fantastic pickup. Now, it begs the question, what is the circumstance with Kim Aiken, the transfer from Arizona? I think with this pickup, Jackson Robinson opting to pick BYU, I think Kim Aiken is probably out. He's probably not coming to BYU. There were very strong indications that he was still waiting on his grad school application to be approved by BYU, get himself into school and be eligible as a graduate student. I don't think that's going to happen. If, if he wants to walk on, maybe BYU takes him, but he's not going to get a scholarship because I think BYU is obviously intent on getting another big man in the mix is that the Noah Waterman can we have discussed previously from Detroit Mercy six foot 11 sharp shooting uh, forward maybe so but I think that this pickup for Jackson Robinson solves two. So I, I talked about this. It's going back maybe a month or so that I talked with somebody who's far more in the know on the BYU basketball front. The three things that BYU is targeting in the transfer portal were a point guard who can handle the ball and is more than capable of being that leading scoring option. That's Rudy Williams, the sharp shooting guy from coastal Carolina. Now Jackson Williams fills, fills the number two slot. That being an elite wing who can both D up the best teams, opposing wing player, while also shooting very well from the outside. Obviously, the production at the college level for a guy like Jackson Robinson has not been there quite yet. So we're going to have to wait and see how he develops. But that solves the number two part of it. The third thing is finding another big man on the roster for BYU. Is Noah Waterman the perfect big man for BYU? Probably not because he's more of a finesse guy who's more of a for an NBA comparison to Christoph Porzingis, who's more content to play on the wing and shoots the three at a very high clip. Let's be honest about that. But if you get Noah Waterman to commit and he went on an official visit this past week to BYU, then you've rounded out your roster and it sure looks like it's quite versatile with regards to the opportunities for it. The only concern I would have if Noah Waterman is the final member of this roster is the fact that you're trusting that a Tiki Ali Atiki can keep his foul issues in check and you don't have to move Fush Triori over to the five spot constantly to uh, make up for losing AAA 
in the, on the interior. That is what you're betting on. And obviously, a guy like Noah Waterman, you'd probably tell him you're going to have to play some more on the interior and defend bigs. Uh, that's going to be a tough gig. You're going to ask you to do it. And you're going to have to do that at a high level. That's the only concern I have is you don't have a true other big man on this roster that can really hold it down on the interior like AAA. So I guess that'd be the only concern I have. But I really like the pickup of Jackson Robinson. It's all based on potential because, like, like I said, the, the, the production – at the college level, has not been there in bunches. Like I said, he's only played 30 games in his college career. He's played the equivalent of one season across two different years, has had eight starts, but yet he is a former four-star prospect, thought to be a very good shooter, a great athlete with six-foot-six height and uh, wingspan, all that stuff. He screams like the perfect addition to the BYU roster, and I think with some of the things that have happened to him in his college career, he may be a little, little bit more humble and be willing to take on some extra coaching now as he tries to kind of rebuild his game and rebuild his dream of making it to the NBA. So I really, really think this is a fantastic pickup for BYU. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how the rest of the roster pans out for BYU. All right, uh, short edition of the show today because I'm getting out to you late, but we'll talk a little bit about some of the awards that were handed out over the weekend and some of the spring sports that just wrapped up their seasons. We'll get to all that here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs, the Stanley Cup ongoing, and Major League Baseball right now. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season as well, including podcasts just like this one. BetOnline.net also is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. And by the way, a teaser ahead to tomorrow's show, BetOnline finally put out the over-under win totals for BYU football. We'll get into that on tomorrow's edition of the show. But head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action now. If you want to see those numbers, get there. They probably already have them posted. You can get a head start on tomorrow's podcast. It's all courtesy of Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. One live NBA draft show is not enough for our friends over the Locked On NBA channel. The entire NBA channel, we're talking all the different NBA channels out there, is going live on NBA Draft Night. So you have a favorite NBA team, make sure you subscribe now to their Locked On YouTube channel so you will get notified when they go live on NBA Draft Night reacting to all the picks. Obviously, I'm a Utah Jazz guy. I'm a lifer in the state of Utah, my hometown team. I'm hoping the Jazz get into the draft and are able to pick up some extra talent. They may require a certain trade of a super, certain superstar and saying Rudy Gobert, for example, but get, get to locked on jazz, follow David Locke's work, subscribe to the YouTube channel now and get ready for NBA draft night. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the awards being handed out in BYU sports over the weekend. Obviously when you have two national champions in men's and women's track and field on, this is on the women's side of things, they are going to get some postseason honors. BYU women's track and field athletes, Courtney Wayman and Ashton Reiner were named to the mountain region track and field athletes of the year by the USTF CCCA. They announced that late last week. Wayman took home the three, thousand meter steeplechase title at the 2022 ncaa outdoor track and field championships beating the record by a full nine seconds she just absolutely shattered it it was her third individual national title and fourth national title overall as she rounds out her career in a byu uniform she is going to have a great career in front of her as a professional runner if that's what she opts to do and then also named as the mountain region track athlete of the year at the end of this indoor season she won the 5,000 meters at the birmingham alabama invite she ran away with that steeplechase title like i said clocking a personal best of nine minutes and 16 seconds flat besting her previous school record by 7.09 seconds the meet record she beat by nine seconds that's what i meant earlier and then obviously ashton reiner she went into the uh, eugene uh meet the national championship uh having broken the school record and having the best throw in the college ranks this year well she obviously goes out there and gets named mountain region athlete of the year uh more than once uh so Ashton Reiner becomes the first field athlete, men's or women's, to win an individual national title since her coach, Nicholas Arrhenius, did so in the discus in 2007. She wins the uh, Javelin uh she wins the Javelin National Championship, the first woman athlete to win it in 30 years, a field title is what I should say. And that's the fun part about this with Ashton Reiner. She's absolutely getting it done. Uh, she actually had a fantastic weekend, it looked like, because she she wins this award. She wins the National Championship. And oh, by the way, just over the weekend, she celebrates her one-year anniversary with her husband, Lane Lund, a BYU tight end on the football team. So pretty good few weeks here for Ashton Reiner, but congratulations to both 
Anthony Wayman, as well as Ashton Ryan, and them well-deserved honorees of those Mountain Region Award Track and Field Athletes of the Year. When you win national titles, obviously, you're going to be in the front runner for those awards. And then on the men's golf side of things, Carson Lindell was named a Ping All-American Honorable Mention. This is the second straight year he's received an Honorable Mention All-American Citation. Very cool to see this. Uh, she, he was led BYU in individual wins, scoring average, top 25, top 10, and top 5 finishes. He helped BYU make it to the NCAA Championships, which is not any small uh, feat these days. Uh, Todd Miller, the director of golf, said Carson continues to solidify his place as one of the top amateur and collegiate golfers in the world. In the last two years, he has finished in the top 25 in 20 of 25 events. That's an 80% clip. And he has won three times overall. His consistency is, is a testament to the strength of every aspect of his game. And we are extremely excited. He's returning for one more year to help our teams make another trip to the NCAA championships. It's crazy to think that Carson Lundell, he probably could turn pro right now and chase his dreams. Uh, guys like Brett Rasmussen are playing up there at the PGA Tour Canada. And by the way, Rasmussen is off to a very good start this season playing the second half of the season up there in the PGA Tour in uh, PGA Tour Canada series. And I think he finished number 11 over the weekend. Very cool to see that. But I like Carson Lundell. He's continuing to hone his craft. I'm not going to bet count him out from potentially becoming the next uh, star golfer coming out of BYU into the pro ranks. You got guys like Peter Kest who have come out and have been very good. But, man, Lundell, back-to-back, -back, honorable mention, All-American citations. And you said, you know what? I wanted to run it back one more time with my guys. That's very, very cool to see. Bruce Brockpink, Todd Miller, they're very thankful to have a guy like that to lead BYU. And when the fact that he is a 80% clip uh, finishing in the top 25 of his events, that means you've got a true number one golfer on your hands. And the hope is that he takes it to the next level in what would be his senior season officially next year for BYU men's golf. Very cool stuff. So congratulations to Carson Lundell. Congratulations to Courtney Wayman, as well as congratulations to Ashton Reiner. All three of them, very deserving honorees. All right, that's going to do it for this shortened edition of our Monday edition of the show. On tomorrow's show, we'll talk a little bit about what to expect from BYU football media, a little bit of a preview ahead, and also react to BYU uh, men, the football program, getting their over-under win total from uh, betonline.net. The interesting note is they have the same over-under as they had last season. Can they exceed what uh, Bet Online had for them this year and last year? We'll get to that on tomorrow's edition of the show. And a big thank you, first off, for your guys' continued support of the podcast. Uh, one note real quick, if you're still listening. I uh, went into the BYU, our Locked On BYU inbox over the weekend just to make sure everything was hunky-dory. Clicked on uh, to see if uh, things were updating. Well, I found a bevy of emails that were somehow lodged in a different tab. It was, I don't know how they, ha how it happened. So if you sent us an email in the last couple of days, last week or so, I apologize if not replied to you, but I will reply to you. I, I found them as a little bit of a trove of emails. I'm going through them, but I will get back to you as soon as humanly possible to let you guys uh, get my responses to your email. So I apologize. I did not see them right away, but we will get that rectified and we will avoid having to have those get filtered into the wrong tab or the wrong folder, I guess is what I should say moving forward. All right, that's enough for today's show. Short edition on a Monday, but we'll have a more uh, football heavy edition on tomorrow's podcast. So stick with us getting ready for BYU Football Media Day. A huge thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. Now go check out our friends over the Locked On Big 12 channel. Josh Neighbors doing an incredible job making sure you're up to date on everything with regards to BYU football when it comes to their new conference home beginning in just over a year's time. It's crazy to think. 377 days away from today, 376 days away from today, excuse me. Crazily enough, it's coming fast. We could not be more excited. Check out Locked On Big 12 wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube like this video you're seeing right now. All right, that's going to do it for us. Have a great rest of your day whenever you hear this. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for June 20th, 2022. And we will talk to you guys tomorrow.